know that you can migrate from your rich status to a wealthy one with just 25 steps? I know you're probably asking how. Stay with us in this video to learn all the steps you need to migrate. So in this video, I will be going over the 25 steps that can migrate you or move you from rich status to a wealthy one. But in order to give you as much value as I can and to ensure that you don't miss out on any of these important steps, I will be dividing this video into two parts. We have the corporate level steps and the personal level steps. Today, we will be going over the corporate level step. But I encourage you to subscribe to the channel to get updated on the release of the second part of this video that will focus on the personal level steps. Believe me, you don't want to miss out on these important steps that can move you from a rich status to a wealthy one. Alright, let's go into what I have for you today. What if I tell you that being rich is different from being wealthy and you have been wrongly identifying a rich person as a wealthy person? I know you're probably asking what is the difference? Being rich refers to having a high income or earning capacity. It means you can buy whatever you want, you can live that luxurious lifestyle you want to live as long as you have this well-paying job. It means your lifestyle depends on your job. Being wealthy, on the other hand, goes beyond having a high income or high earning capacity. It encompasses an accumulation of assets, investment, and resources over a period of time. I know that is a lot of grammar, but let me make it simpler for you to understand. Let's look at it this way. You have two male friends. One is called rich and the other is called wealth. Now, rich has a lot of income today. He can buy whatever he wants. He can go for shopping. He can get that expensive phone or that expensive clothes or that expensive cars, which he has always wanted to get. And that is because he has a well-paying job. But if he loses this job, he might not be able to afford this lifestyle anymore. How about wealth? Wealth, on the other hand, didn't tell his lifestyle to his well-paying job. He doesn't just have money for today alone. He has also secured his financial future and those of generations unborn through savings and investments. So even if wealth loses his job today, it doesn't affect his lifestyle or his standard of living. Before we go into these 10 steps that can migrate a corporate body that is rich to a wealthy one, let's look at the difference between a rich corporate body and a wealthy corporate body. A rich corporate body is a company that has more of cash and liquidity, whereas a wealthy corporate body is a company that has more of assets than liquidity or cash. A rich corporate body can get wound up as a result of insolvency, whereas a wealthy corporate body cannot be wound up as a result of insolvency because it has assets to fall back on. Now, let's go into the 10 steps that can move a corporate body from a rich status to a wealthy status. The first step is developing a wealth creation mindset. Corporate bodies that want to migrate from a rich status to a wealthy status must first think and act in the path of wealth. This is because creating wealth is a long-term process and it comes with long-term benefits. It is unlike being a rich corporate body which is just for the short term and can fold up at any time. Like we mentioned earlier, a rich company can file for bankruptcy tomorrow and this is because it has not created wealth. Using the SWECO analysis is one of the major steps corporate bodies can implement to create wealth. By SWECO analysis, I mean making analysis of the company's strengths, their weaknesses, their environment, the competitors, their customers, and equally, the opportunities that are available for the company in the society. When corporate bodies who have this wealth creation mindset carry out this analysis, they will be able to identify where their loyal customers are, the strength of their customers, and the weakness of the company so that they can buckle up on that weakness in order to create more productivity and profits. And talking about mindset, let me remind you a famous quote from Robert Kiyosaki who is the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Robert has this to say about mindsets. Your mindset matters. If you don't have the mindset of a wealthy person, 
you will never achieve wealth. Corporate bodies that want to build wealth must first develop this wealth mindset. A wealthy mindset is a growing mindset, the mindset of wanting to head over to the next level. It is different from a rich mindset. A corporate body with a rich mindset has a rich mindset. Therefore, they don't want to go above where they are. They just want to remain at that particular level. And the next step is think of value addition. This step starts with the question, how can I add value to the society at large? Or rather, how can I add value to at least just one person or 10% of the population in a strategic location? These are very important questions where value comes into play. Value is a major driver of wealth. Corporate bodies that think more about adding value to the society are most likely to achieve their wealth targets. Value refers to the needs of people in the society or in a location. Identifying and providing the needs of people in the society is an opportunity that corporate bodies can leverage on and grow their financial strengths. Always remember this, that you can be a rich company without providing value. But to be a wealthy company, you must provide value. Look at various big companies in the world today. There is a value that they provide to the society that kept them or that took them to the position they are today. Let's go over to the third step that can migrate a rich corporate body to a wealthy world. And the third step is starting small. Steve Jobs, who is one of the co-founder and a former CEO of the world's most successful company, Apple, has this to say about starting small. Start small, think big. Don't worry about too many things at once. Think about not just tomorrow, but the future. This job statement simply means that the pathway to wealth starts with a single step. A corporate body that wants to create wealth and build wealth must see opportunities where others see threats. And this is because a company with a rich mindset will always be discouraged from going ahead to take that small step that matters. Opening up small branches in strategic locations by companies with wealthy mindset is a good step towards building wealth both now and in the future. This brings us to the fourth step and it is developing business research capacity. When a company has identified a value, like we mentioned in step two, that it intends to provide to the society, and it has equally set out financial resources for that particular project, the rule of the thumb here is for the company to carry out extensive research on the project it intends to embark on. And this is because it will help companies with this wealthy mindset not to make the wrong investment in the wrong project, which may lead to big financial failure in the future. By business research, I mean making a realistic plan towards creating value. The business research would cover legal issues, environmental concerns, product demands, ease of doing business, so on and so forth. You must make research on this activity because it involves huge financial dedication. And the next important step is human capital utilization. A wealthy company has a distinguishing quality that differentiates it from a rich company or other company, and that is a massive investment in human capital. Human capital means strengthening the reservoir of human knowledge in terms of innovation, health, and development. It is often called capacity building in business world. Effective human capital is very important for a company that has a wealthy mindset, and this is because it will bring about higher productivity a reduced employee turnover, and even a competitive advantage in the market. Investment in human capital should comprise both skill enhancement and even health insurance. And this is to ensure that the company achieves its financial objective. Human capital is the company's most valuable asset, and without this asset, all other assets remain dormant. The next step is to develop good credit rating. A good credit rating for a company will bring about better access to finance for expansion. There will also be increased trust from business partners and also an increase in the confidence of the market towards the company's activities. Companies should also ensure that their debt levels are kept in check to prevent financial instability in the future. 
The next step is to acquire good leadership skill. This step is very crucial in unlocking the full potential of an organization towards achieving their financial objective of being wealthy. Corporate leadership should operate an all-inclusive decision-making process. And this is because the morale of the workforce is central to the achievement of the financial success of the company. So a good corporate leadership skill is required to manage the employees and make them see the company's financial objective as if it is their own objective. Remember that creating value is what leads to creation of wealth. And for the company and for a company to create value, it must have effective employees. And effective employees come as a result of a good corporate leadership skill. This brings us to the next step, which is sustain good corporate image. It looks at the reputation of the company. Corporate image of a company refers to that growing trust between the company and the general public. And the general public include the customers and the government. When the general public has a trust in your company, you must strive to sustain that particular trust the public has towards your company. And some of the various ways through which companies can sustain this particular trust is by obeying the laws of contracts, avoiding fraudulent activities on the name of the company, sustaining product quality, putting out factual advertisements, and even promoting the home country national value. This brings us to the next step, which is maintain healthy lifestyle. Corporate bodies should promote a culture of healthy living and work-life balance among its management and employees. Implementing this step will bring about a productive workforce. There will even be an increase in employee retention. There will also be a reduced healthcare expenses. And very importantly, it will boost the company's overall profitability towards that goal of achieving wealth. The last but not the least step is focusing more on assets than liquidity. Assets are resources controlled by a company and from which future revenue are expected to flow into the company. Some examples of assets include production machines, buildings, lands, brands, their product quality, a loyal customer, and even an effective workforce. Liquidity, on the other hand, simply means cash. Companies with wealthy mindsets should build up their assets because assets are the building blocks of wealth. Asset appreciating value. They generate income into the foreseeable future. They provide opportunities for financial growth and even bring about wealth accumulation in the long run. And that is it, the 10 steps that can migrate a rich company to a wealthy company. Implementing this 10 step by corporate bodies will bring about effective results towards achieving their financial objective. If you've gotten value from this video so far, give us a like and share this video to those people who you feel this video will be helpful to. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get updated on the release of the second part of this video. Are there other steps you feel corporate bodies that wants to become wealthy can implement? Drop a comment in the comment section below to tell how some other steps corporate bodies can use to migrate to a wealthy status. Thank you for watching. See you in the second part of this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Go subscribe.